I am the Dark Master, and welcome back to the History of Mississippi. This episode will be a little different than most. The previous episodes have focused on an entire period, such as the Silurian or Devonian. The next two episodes, however, will be covering the two sub-periods of the Carboniferous, the Mississippian and the Pennsylvanian, rather than the entire period. Now, the Mississippian is divided into three stages, from oldest to youngest. It's Turonacian, Visian, and the Serpukovian. None have a cool name, and I think you can now realize why I decided to make a video dedicated to a time period literally named after my home, my home state. Anyway, let us begin the inter- the Mississippian. Now, geology hasn't been the focus of the series, however, I want to do a brief summary up to now, because I feel it's relevant now. Pangaea, the famous supercontinent, was about to form in the Mississippian. Before this, there had been multiple continents. This allowed for open circulation of the oceans. Pangaea's formation would set up one of the worst events in the history of the planet but we'll discuss that later in the series. While the previous Devonian had a tr trend of cooling and drying, the Carboniferous reversed that, and then some. Firstly, almost the entire world was tropical. Not Mississippi, subtropical, think Rio Grande. And unless you live in the dry lands of northern Canada or the Baltics, I hope you packed your sub-gear, because... The water levels were so high, with the exception of the previously mentioned Canada or the Baltic nations, you were underwater, which is really unfortunate. What lived at this time, you may ask? Well, for one, sharks. After the Devonian mass extinction left all of the placodonts extinct, many ecological niches were left unoccupied and were now available to sharks, which widely diversified into numerous alien forms. One of these from the Mississippian period was Stenanthus, also known as the ironing board shark. It had a strange fin that had sharp spines all over it. Stethocanthus was a small predator that ate smaller fish and crinoids. On land, things were at first still recovering from the Devonian extinction. A gap in the fossil record called Romer's Gap occurred in the middle Mississippian, which has a lack of early tetrapods compared to fish fossils, which are often found in droves. While the Devonian saw the extinction of the more fish-like Ichthostega and its close relatives, more advanced amphibians, such as Pederepsis evolved. While still amphibians and therefore bound to the water, it and another species, Eurytia, are known to have been more adapted to land, being able to support their weight out of the water. Both of these species are known for the Mississippian. The Mississippian saw both the first reptiles and their ancestors, the reptilomorphs. Reptilomorphs came first, and are somewhere in between amphibians and reptiles. Unlike their more aquatic relatives, amphibians, reptilomorphs had stronger legs that allowed them to go over logs and into dry land. This was really advantageous in the log-choked areas of the swamp. 
One of the reptilomorphs is Protergyrus, which resembles at first an amphibian crocodile, and unlike its competition, was able to easily go onto dry land and crawl over woody trunks. The very first reptile also emerged at this time. Unlike reptilomorphs, reptiles were completely separate from the water, being able to breathe on dry land. The very first one, Castronaria, is known from the Mississippian period. However, not all amphibians took this route, however. Several species, such as Cassigrius, re returned to the water, becoming almost exclusively aquatic, like modern-day sirens. Reptilimos, despite being formally adapted to the land, also returned to the water, with aquatic predators such as Archaea seeking to return to their amphibian roots. You might be asking why this happened. Well, this is because evolution isn't a straightforward path and can go in any direction, assuming niches are available. So, this is why not only did these animals return to the water, but so did crocodilians and whales. But we won't cover that till much later. Giant dragonflies and millipedes, which are some of the most famous life forms of the Carboniferous, aren't known from the Mississippian. So we shall cover them next time. But there was a giant scorpion Putimonoscorpius that fed on smaller arthropods and tetrapods. Now, you might be asking, of all this biodiversity, what do we have in the fossil record? Maybe one of the dying out trilobites? An amphibian? A reptile? No. We have petrified wood. You heard it there first, folks. Wood. Not the most impressive fossil, however, they were a unique type of plant called tree ferns. On that depressing note, join me next time when I cover the much more diverse Pennsylvanian, where there is a lot more to discuss, and I can assure you that episode will be much longer. This has been the Dark Master, and I hope you join us next time in the history of Mississippi.